How did you come up with the idea to film the process of turning a kickboxer into a fighter? The process of turning a kickboxer into a boxer. Um, the first thing that inspired me is because they've got the talent to do it, these particular fighters. And the, the real underlying thing that really motivated me was that I saw these guys who were world class athletes but weren't making world class money. Whereas their cousins in the boxing world, with in some aspects, some situations don't even have the talent of these guys or the dedication, <coughs> getting paid triple, quadruple the time, the, the, the money that these kids were getting paid. So I'm, I'm like, you know, if, if I could introduce these young men to this, to this other facility, then um, their money can go up. If their money goes up, they can have less worries, less worries, they can concentrate more on their sport and um, be excellent. I love excellence because I suffer from depression. When I see excellence, it makes me feel better about my day. These guys are like, they're, med they're my medicine when they're working at the best of their game. So purely for selfish reasons, I wanted to have more things that I enjoy around me. So I wanted to catch this on film, which means I can constantly keep playing it yeah. to myself and feed myself with it. Yeah. You, you really see how they achieve things, how they train real hard. You really can see they, they were growing from the beginning till now. And that's amazing to see. Yeah. You know, so basically on a personal level, it was, it was like visual food. Yeah. For me, I wanted to see that. An inspiration too. Yeah, man. It was real inspiration for me because I'm not a boxer. I train sometimes, but now when they train, when I saw them train, I was like, "Damn, I want to be like them too, man. <laughs> I want to work hard too, because that's a real sport. You can go to a fitness club. You go sometimes you fitness. Then you think, okay, this week before the summer, I'm gonna train hard so I can look sexy. But after that, you don't train anymore because the summer is, it's, 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 it's on, on the ending. So um, yeah. Uh, a real sp if you do real sport, you will see you'll achieve a lot of a lot more than only training. Sometimes these guys will be hard. And how was it for you to make the decision to film the documentary, knowing you would travel abroad with Bang and the Boys? Um, yeah, like I said, it's 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 uh, it was amazing for me because because I learned a lot of uh, about sport. I learned a lot and about food and um, filming a documentary. That's that's big and. Uh, yeah, it, it, in the beginning it was complicated for me because I never did documentaries that are so long. I always shoot uh, short things like uh, a short film, a commercial thing, and this this was a new exp uh, experience for me. But I liked it and I learned a lot for, uh, from it. And you just came, um, you just graduated. Yeah. What did you learn in like working with someone who has been working in the field for so many years <coughs> that you haven't learned in school? Um. Um, uh, I, I learned how to how to see it on a, on a other way, because on school we only learn like the basic things like how to make this shot, how to do that. But it's more than only filming. You can have filming skills. You can you can make beautiful shots and everything. But if you don't know how to build up a story, how to how to show them uh, uh, emotions and when to be there, when to film that, and the business wise things, that's what I learned a lot of the documentary, because working with Bang and meeting uh, other. Uh, uh, a, person, a person who knows a lot about business and everything. That's uh, what I learned a lot about. And there are multiple storylines. You have the kickboxers, the trainers, um, Mohammed Hafei, the couch surfers, open mic night music. They're not the couch surfers. You guys are the couch surfers. We're the couch surfers. They're, They're the couch the hosts. hosts. Yeah. They're the hosts. We stayed at them. You mm -hmm. guys are the surfers. The open mic night music. Yeah. Food. What is the common thread between all these scenes and individuals? I think I think that the that everybody is just your average person. That was the number one thing for me. That you, you know, art. I, I think art art is a form of medicine. 
You know what I mean? Um, the first time I realised the power of about the power of art and sound was that when you know when they had slaves in the fields, even though they were in terrible situations, they're away from their families, brutalised every day. Hmm. They used these sounds as a form of anaesthesia. It got them through their situations. And I realized from very young, it's a very powerful thing. You know what I mean? Th these ebonics that is coming out of people. And even though we're making a film about fighting, it's still very musical because of the rhythms yeah. that are used by the fighters and put into them by the trainers. You know what I mean? Who are connected culturally to slaves, do you know what I mean? And it's permeated through, it's it, the thread has gone through everything. You know what I mean? That when we stayed with Muhammad, this is an Arab, you know, that speaks in another language. But when he starts to, when he started to recite the Quran, it gave people energy. Then we, we you know, then it, it was like how we eat, how we were eating. And the, the whole atmosphere of everybody that, that was around, there was, there was a flow in the air that was the common thread is that when we want when we were all trying to help each other go forward right and it was you know i don't want to intellectualize simplicity but basically we had an idea to show ourselves first and be able to reshow ourselves because of going back rewinding to the beginning and playing it again yeah. this this medicine okay and everybody helped to make sure that this medicine can be spread to other people who want to watch it so all you're going to see in, in this thing you're not going to see people <clears throat> for instance when I've I've done documentaries before for MTV and I spoke to one of the people there and he was like where's the part where you mock yourself you know and it, and I was like there is none and then they went they don't want it anymore you know there has to be some part where you're dumbing yourself down or something like this and I'm like that's why I went the independent route and asked the people to fund this because there is no downside. I know that people want to say that it's part of life, but there was no downside mm -hmm. in this journey. Nobody got depressed. Nobody committed a crime. Nobody, you know, you hear this a lot amongst sports guys and rappers and people that like say, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be a drug dealer. Yeah. No, if they weren't doing this or any of us weren't doing this, we'd be excellent at something else. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, world's, the world is full of opportunities. Yeah, man. But you have to desire and believe in it and go. And it's as simple as that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, we edit on a program that you have to learn. Yeah. And once you learn that program, what goes in the edit is our style, the way we want to yeah. see film. The reason why we're making this film is because TV doesn't provide the type of films for me most of the time that I'm into. The internet doesn't provide most of the time the type of documentaries about fighters that I want to see. So therefore, there's the technology and the opportunity right now. So now I want to make the type of film that I want to see. And hopefully there's other people that I want to see. You know, when I was younger, I used to go to late night movies, kung fu movies, and they would play four of them. You know, we'd be in there like late night movies, you know, the cinema would open up late and we'd go in there and they'd play one movie after the other. Nobody got bored. Three or four movies, we're watching them back to back. Mm -hmm. But today there's this audio visual bubble thing where you don't get in touch with the human beings you're watching anymore because it's all little sound bites. That's because the editor wants to show off that he's he's cuts. But it's, it's so he's not he don't care about the story, he just cares about look I can cut a movie like this yeah, or yeah, yeah. we want to tell a story and we want you to get in touch with the people as human beings. So some of the scenes are seven minutes long. So you can get to know the people, you can yeah. I don't want you to, sh to, to do a Rocky thing where I say to the fighter, right, throw this combination, cut, take a rest, because I want you to be dynamic again. Yeah. No, instead of me getting, getting an actor, I'd rather go to a fighter that can last and train for 30 minutes non-stop and get stronger and faster as he's going along. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that guy lives next door. He's not from another planet. He's not a superhero that stays in the Hilton. He's not a superstar, he's the average guy next door that pays his light bills and struggles to eat well like everybody else. Yeah, that, that's what that's what uh, the, it makes the documentary amazing because it's real. You see this guy's training, 
from day till night even in the even in the dark sure. you can see that and that's what it makes it amazing because it's all real yeah were you slightly nervous due to the expectations on you with um your lack of experience but because normally you do short uh film and this is your first <coughs> documentary independently yeah. john so yeah oh no i was i was not nervous because uh, uh, how John told me about the, the about the project, I uh, found it amazing, and uh, I felt like I can do this, and I believed in it, and I just followed and did did what I do. Mm -hmm. Straight up, straight up, yeah, <laughs> straight up. What made you take a chance with a man with an obvious talent with a camera but no experience to take on such a complex project? I didn't want his prior experiences. I didn't want what his lecturer try to confine him to and like to create a clone of your lecturer mm. I don't want if his lecturer was a great filmmaker he wouldn't be a lecturer he'd be making film so I don't want what that guy is teaching you know what I mean as long as he can use a program to edit and you know he's a, he's a person of color that means from the minute he was born he has a style you can't teach that he has an eye and he has a style. So all he had to be was young, enthusiastic, and brown. Food <laughs> 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 uh, okay. has had a very important role in the documentary. How is your relationship with food now, Oliver? Uh, my relationship with food now is uh, it's amazing. Because now... Uh, the days we were in London, I learned a lot about uh, organic food, uh, more than I already knew. Um, and I, I took it back to Holland and now my kitchen is full of organic food. <laughs> um, for people who aren't necessarily interested in fighting and are more obsessed with the celebrity-based culture, what is the biggest, big, biggest message that um, Turnover has to offer them? That even though you don't have a budget and a million helpers with their hands in your pocket claiming to build your fame, um, you're more important. When you do something independently and with your friends, do you know what I mean? And you get off your own backside and you get out there. The number one thing about, about this is that I'm hoping that the average person goes back into their rightful place, which is, they are the real celebrities. You know, the people that I admire, I mean, back in the day when I used to go, waste my time in nightclubs and poison my body with liquid drugs, um, when I was falling home, there were people already standing at bus stops and tram stops, going to set up clean businesses and prepare places of work for other people while those people were still asleep. And those people are the real athletes. They get up at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, day in, day out, never miss a day from work and bring up families. So the whole celebrity thing, it's almost like they're cripples because there's so many people involved in making them do what they do. So the number one thing about this is, is that everybody is extremely talented and world-class, but, you don't have a bank behind them or a bank loan or help us. We did it on our own amongst ourselves. Yeah. With one camera. How did you come to the decision of doing a documentary when the public have seen documentaries about fighters before? How did you think you could portray this in a way to get people's attention for them to think, oh no, not another? about boxing First of all, the two guys involved are the fittest human beings I've ever met. And I knew that the way they train and how they train is not like the way I've seen other boxers perform. And like for instance, you see Floyd Mayweather do very fast pads, but he taps the pads and that allows him to have speed. And these fighters do the pads fast like him but with full power and longer shots they're not just tapping around like this and the trainers bringing the pad to them which makes them look really busy 
and but the trainer is slapping the pad and making the sound. Now these guys are meeting the pad with long shots, full movement, with the same speed. There's no faking in, in this. These guys are what it says on the can. They're fighters. You know what I mean? Even to the point of you go to another country, you spar once, and then the word goes around, and none of the gyms want to put their fighters forward to spar with you anymore. Because they feel ashamed that their fighters specialise in boxing and somebody comes from another discipline and hurts their fighters. Do you know what I mean? So, this is more than just a fighting movie. You know what I mean? It's a, it should be inspiration about that if you take care of yourself properly and you remain positive and get along with people around you, you can achieve something, even a two hour documentary. And everybody involved, the number one thing about everybody involved, there was no egos. Everybody wanted to help everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an inspirational. It's inspiration. And um, how was it for you both to be working together? And plus, together? it wasn't just about the fighters. I also documented the fact, it's very clear within it, that the director and the cameraman as well and the people that helped behind the scenes are all on camera. Everybody's on camera. It's more than just a fighting movie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a, you know, the fighters are the symbolism of everybody that was in it because everybody was being dedicated and using everything it takes to be a world championship fighter. Dedication, rest, good diet, focus. Everybody from Mohammed, Faye, Don Charles, Lucian Carbin, you know what I mean? Everybody, the other fighters, the the, the, the kid that comes at, that's making our merchandise, everybody was was you know involved. The kid was basically you know trying to make a, a, a top for the turnover documentary. We filmed him, but then he also brought coconuts, which is a side yeah. business that he has, in order to to to, to um, rehydrate the boys with natural electrolytes after they finish training. It's real. We didn't just, you know, go and buy coconuts and say, you know, chop this up for a scene, you know, to make it look. It was the guy. This is his side business as a young man that he uses to fund his t-shirt company. So it's bigger than than a than a, a fight movie. It's beautiful because you guys had a lot of support <coughs> out of all the. But what was like the biggest enemy? for the fighters or maybe for you, you guys, what was the biggest? Telephones. Mm -hmm. How so? They're distracting. You might as well take heroin. What do you mean? Because when I, there, there were times that, that um, I was sitting talking about what we were going to do the next day and some of the, uh, the people, I'm not going to mention any names, were on their telephone and they didn't have headphones in, they were just looking into their telephone and I had to repeat their name about five times. So how can you have nothing in your ears, be looking into your phone but you lose your hearing? It's the same way when you're in a car and you get distracted by this thing, you can crash that car. Even though you know that this car is a killing machine, so you need to take care because you did your driving lesson in order for you to make sure you operate this machinery properly because it can kill you and when you went on the phone you forgot about all that and risked your life so you might as well be driving the car and take a shot of heroin it's the same risk mm -hmm. so telephones were, 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 were the downside for me and that was it telephones and internet why internet? The same movie? thing same thing, you know, if you're a fighter, don't go on the internet looking at girls shaking their ass. Look at fights. Was it easy getting your ideas into practice with the cameraman to get the result that you wanted? Yeah. Easy, just real easy. Doing what we do. We didn't have to prepare, go and 
light some incense and find out if we like each other over dinner. We don't have to intellectualize the simplicity. Everybody does that, you know, it was a special moment that we went in the studio and then because this and this happened, we made a great edit. No, we just felt like doing it and we do it. Yeah. Just go with the flow. How did you find putting into practice what you've learned to get the picture, the atmosphere and the idea of what Ben wanted? Yeah. Um, yeah, me, me and John, we just, we, he told me the idea and I just did what I felt I have to do and that's how it goes. Yeah, but for, for yeah. me, for me it was like, film the fight, they're gonna fight, Yeah. they're fighting now, film the fighting. Yeah. And then, you know, I was another set of eyes, so he was exactly. capturing it the way he wanted to capture it and most times he captured it in a better manner than what I saw it with my own eyes. That's down to him about how he captures something, how he plays with light and stuff like that. That's his area of expertise. I trusted that. I saw some work that yeah. he'd done before. So, but then if, if he was concentrating, you know, for instance, on, on a situation over there where the guys are fighting, but then there's a little boy that somebody has to put a block, a couple of blocks together for him to use the speed bag. And I'm like, we need that. You know, so then I'll notify him of that, that that's there and he'll come and catch, capture that, but at the same time keeping his ear on the fighting. And when he hears it's getting intense, he's like, I've got enough of that, boom, back on the fighting again. But in the edit, it looks like two different days. Yeah. Mm. How did, um, are the guys turned over? No. Not yet. I'm turned over. Because, you know, I, I, I take my own initiative to do what I want to do. He's turned over. He takes his own initiative. Don Charles has turned over. He turns up at the gym every day. Nobody holds his hand. Lucian Carbin has turned over. The boys, unfortunately, because of the nature of making a film, had to be taken care of. So their accommodation was taken care of and they were fed and they were driven around. In the, in the world of amateur, that's what happens when you're an amateur, your mother and father or some adult takes you to the gym until it becomes a love of yours and then you say now I want to be a professional and what changes from being amateur to professional is that you go on your own and use your own initiative and you, you watch your diet rather than mummy making you your dinner every day. Do you know what I mean? You do your groceries, you take responsibility for your body, you study what makes you stronger you turn up at the gym and ask your trainer, I need to work on these weak spots that I feel in myself and my own body. So the turnover part is basically what the guys have to do themselves, which is get their license, take their medicals, and make themselves available to fight in the ring. That part has not been filmed yet, because that part is up to the guys. We done every facility for them that would make them know they have a promoter waiting to promote them. They have trainers ready to train them. The gymnasiums are ready. The ring for competition is waiting. The fighters to fight them are there. It's up to them whether they want to take themselves into the ring and realize this concept. If they don't, it's not on me, Oligar, Don Charles or Lucian Carbin. So that's the interesting thing about this. Will they turn over? Yeah. I can't get inside their heads or their heart. It's up to them. You will see. Um, this Everything was uh, made possible by uh, crowdfunding, by the people, 40 people. If there are people watching Turnover and they're like, I want to do something with crowdfunding as well, do you have tips, do's and don'ts for them? Be enthusiastic about what you want to do. Don't let, you know, if you're fake and you just want to do this as a hobby, people are going to see it and people are not going to back you because yeah, really, they're going to see yeah. you're not real. Yeah, you really have to desire it. You really have to love it. To do honestly. It. Yeah, well, yeah, honestly, for sure. And obviously people see that 
and people will sense it. It's bigger than any con that you can do. I really want to do this. People do these cons every day. The music yeah. industry and the film industry are full of people that are not into the art. They're into the money. Yeah. So they fake being artists and they get funded because that's all they want. And you see this whole industry of not making real music. They're making the type of music that, they're, that their paymasters tell them that they should make in order for them to live a lifestyle that they've now got. So now what happens is a lot of these people are just paying mortgages. This is art. I'm not doing this to pay a mortgage. I'm doing this to inspire human beings. Do you know what I mean? So that it's not just for fighters, it's for any any person that needs motivating and and who's afraid that because they've got no support, maybe, you know, they should quit. Yeah. You know, if you show in your heart that you're real and you really want something, it's infectious. Other people will want you to realize that. Especially other people that have failed in their lives, they're, they're going to want to see other people succeed. There are a set of people that don't want to see anybody succeed because they're failure, but there seems to be a lot of them, but they're a minority, really. This, making this documentary was smooth. It was easy. Everybody wanted to help. Yeah. You know, and there were no there were no downsides to it, man. Yeah, that's what I liked about this trip, because everybody helped each other, and everybody was inspiring each other, and uh, making sure that everything uh, goes uh, the good way and everything. And that's what I liked about this trip, and that's what I learned of helping each other, inspiring yeah. each other, and go for it.